Well, we found the drag marks. I've walked into the drainage. We found crew line a kill. I can't see whether the cubs are there, but very, very exciting. Rex has done all the hard work and got us looking in the right area. Uh, and James, but I don't know, James, does James do any work? <laughs> so James, who's Rexon's tracker, and I used to work together at Londolozzi many years ago. Now, we're going to try to find a way in here. It is a little bit of a difficult spot. Okay, so she was just in here. So what I did, I, was, I wasn't feeling particularly brave, so I didn't walk straight into the thicket. I walked up onto the other bank to where I thought the tracks were going, and looked down, and there she was, looking up at me like this. Like, what are you doing here? Right about halfway between Weaver's Nest and Twin Dams. See if we can get in here. So I spotted her from that tree and she was looking right at me. I mean, there's a cub. I can see one of the cubs. I think we might have to go to the other side up on top of the bank. And it looks like Shongile. Can you see her there, Jandre? And there's Hosanna as well. Okay, come out and down. Uh, that's that's Hosanna if you come closer to us. Yeah. On the ground. Oh, there, yes, there she is. Um, I'm just going to make some space now. Now, Karula is. Oh, she's the, just to the left. Um, I don't know, we might be able to get a spot just to see her spots. Um, where are we now? There. There, you can just make out her spots. Oh, barely. Um, I'm just trying to see now. She's feeding at the moment. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try find a spot where we can see a bit better and also make some space for Rex in here. I think we might have to try find a way to get on top of this, this on top of this bank in front of us. So I'm gonna to have to drive out of here for now. It's not a very good spot. Okay. How's that, John? A little bit more? Oh, one, one branch. Right, hang on, hold on, John. There's just one, there we go. Are we there? We're there. Okay. Okay, so I just need to chat to Aubrey on the radio quickly. Orbs, I don't know if you're gonna get a visual from there. I think the best, is if, the best visual of all of them is to possibly see if you can come around and up onto this side. Okay, there we go. Success. I have, I've, I haven't been seeing leopard in so long, and I definitely haven't had the joy of coming on to Queen Karula on foot. So very exciting. I'm so happy. Look at her, isn't she a lovely lady? Didn't even snarl at me. <laughs> and the cubs just looked. And they, they, they've got so used to being tracked. That I can't see what the kill is. Well, Chai Connie says she appreci appreciates us trying to get the, the great view. Chai Connie, it is my absolute pleasure. I get as much enjoyment out of showing you the incredible animals we get as I do in seeing them myself. So uh, difficult to say what the kill is. <laughs> the moment it's just red meat, and there's that's Shongile Hosana. Unfortunately, from our current position, uh, we can't see. It doesn't look like a big kill. It looks like maybe a Daiko or a Stenbok. Well, you can 
see why I didn't want to walk straight into those thickets. I would have nearly stood on her before I would have been able to see her. I think it's a diker. Just go down a little bit, sorry, Shondra, where the fur is. And just zoom in, zoom in there. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a diker. You can see the grey fur, a grey diker. Now, with the three of them, I'm pretty sure that's probably going to be finished by tomorrow morning. And poor Karula's going to have to hunt again. Chris says it's good to see mom getting a good meal instead of the cubs. I'm just trying to see, speaking of cubs, where Hassan is. It is, and unfortunately, I'd love, I, we'd all love to spend all our time with Queen Krula, but she never really looks too hungry. She's such a proficient hunter that I think, and even with the hard job of feeding a two sort of bottomless pits, she, she keeps herself in good nick. Now, as I said, I don't think she's going to hoist this. I think it'll be gone before the opportunity to hoist comes upon her. And it looks like the cubs have had a good meal of it already. If we look at young Shongile down in the bottom of the riverbed, having a good little cat nap with a big belly. Now, the one thing you'll notice, and in all the time we've been spending with Karula, uh, you'll notice that leopards very seldom feed together. And they do that because they are mostly solitary. So it's almost like timeshare at the carcass. When one's done, the other takes its place. Not to say they never feed together, but it is less common which is very different from lions, where they all get stuck in. Now, just to end off the nearly impossible tree quiz, I thought I had you all stumped. But, of course, Raisa, well done, Raisa's in Finland, and one of our, I would suppose we could call Raisa Fundi. Now, Fundi is Swahili for expert. She's very sharp on these things, and it indeed was Acacia Gerardi, the red thorn. Well done, Raisa. Should we move a little bit back, see if we can see Hosanna, see what he's up to? It looked like he might have moved up towards that little tree. Okay, so while we do that, and try to get you a view of the Prince of Tumor, let's go see Taylor and a feathered friend. We're still sitting with the queen as she devours uh, that little grey diker. We've definitely confirmed it's a grey diker. Only the hindquarters intact still. There's a chance they might be here still tomorrow morning, but it is it is quite slim. We can only hope that they are still here. Unfortunately. It's a difficult one for us to see all of the little ones. They are lying up against the bank, so... Look at that. You can see her claws gripping the carcass in place. Okay, sorry, someone's calling me on the radio. If um, there's not much Nyama yet left, I don't know, I think they're going to be here tomorrow. And Ephraim is just asking how much of the kill was left. Well, 
There we go. Laura in New Mexico is wondering, do Karula and her, or do the cubs hunt while she's away hunting? And do they eat then? Uh, Laura, they do, but it's normally very small things like uh, maybe a dwarf mongoose or, or Franklin or, or even some grasshoppers and things, but they will eat a little bit, not much. They are still very heavily reliant on mom to provide sustenance at the moment. Now, it is not impossible uh, that at this age, about nine months, they can become independent. There is the record of a young male becoming independent because his mother was killed by lions at nine months old, and he went on to survive as well. So, incredible story there. But normally, as I said, with the females, year, year and a half, they will start looking to spend less and less time with their mother. Males, two, two to two and a half years, they spend a little bit longer with mom, find it a little bit harder to leave. I'm trying to see. I can hear the bone crunching from here, but I think with the wind it's going to be a bit difficult, Chandra. Yeah, so, so we can't put the ambient up, we'll just hear, which is possibly not very pleasant. <laughs> Zoe, you, you've probably put uh, or hit the nail on the head of a, something most trackers experience quite a lot. And uh, Zoe wants to know, do I think I've... Oh, look, Orky's displaying. Oh, Zoe, I will answer your... Oh, no, don't go away. Darn it. There was a southern boo-boo who was displaying, giving that wonderful call. I'll keep an eye out. He might pop up again. But, um, sorry, Zoe. Yes, Zoe. It says, do you think it's possible that I've been on foot with leopards many times and not known it? I would say probably more times than I've found them. They've seen me and I've walked right past them. They are incredibly good at camouflaging when they flatten themselves to the ground. Now, uh, just so you know what's happening, I'm just checking. Both the cubs are still fast asleep in there same spots as they were, so we're going to stick with mum. And... Oof. No, it's gone again, sorry, that Bobo is giving us a bit of a hard time flattering around us. Remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you've got any questions or if you'd prefer, pop us an email to questions at wildearth.tv. See, she's very alert. Even while she's feeding, she stops, listens every now and then. Making sure there's no potential threat I can hear something as well Karula it sounds like something walking Could be a buffalo, something big, uh, just off in the bushes, uh, probably about 200 meters from us. Oh, you can see she's stopped feeding. I wonder if one of the. No, she's back feeding now. And I wonder if one of the cubs is going to take her place. Oh, she's moving the carcass. That's a male diker, an adult male diker. There she is. I wonder if she's looking for a tree to hoist it in now that her and both the cubs are very, very full. Oh, 
Well, his sign has lifted his head, that's about it, but we can't really see him from with a camera from where we are. I can just make him out under a porcupine bush. Now, the reason she's looking to possibly hoist it now is as we head into the crepuscular time of the day when the hyenas might start manoeuvring, although I have forgotten what a hyena looks like. So long since I last saw one on Juma. There she goes. Let's see where she's taking it. Okay, let's keep following her. We'll just reverse back. So Paul Jandre doesn't twist his spine. I wonder which tree she's gonna take it to. How am I behind me? Ah, oh, oh, look at that, she's gonna take it to that Tamburti. Let's, hold on, hold on, Jandre. I think she's gonna hoist it now. Oh, let's get there quickly. There we go. Oh, we're in the perfect spot. She's gonna hoist it up the Tumbuti tree. Oh, we got there just in the nick of time, Jandre. Although she's now waiting after our mad dash. Looks like she's almost an indecision. There we go. No, don't do it on the back side of the tree where we can't see. Just taking a little break before lifting it. Getting her. Strength up. There we go. There she goes. There she goes. She's looking back. One of the cubs is following her, but we're going to stick on her. It's a lovely, actually a lovely spot to hoist. And it's going to make our life much, much easier. Mine Warp says Karel needs to put it in the tree so Hasana can knock it out. Yes, young leopard cubs are quite good at dropping meals out of the trees. Fortunately for Karel, there are not many hyenas around at the moment. So I'm sitting there going, oh, oh, it's going to be such an effort. There we go. Come on, Queenie. Up you go. There we go. <laughs> no, she's decided. Not yet. Is it now? There we go. Look at that. She's she's in that spring position. Her muscles are coiled. go finally well done Karula right right up in there how many meters I get one two seven or eight meters up
Now I'm just going to move backwards a little bit so we get that leaf out of the way. Uh, maybe forwards, eh? Back. There we go. Now Joyce is wondering whether putting the carcass in a tambuji tree, which we all know is very, very poisonous, will it affect the meat at all. It won't, Joyce. I mean, she's not getting the milky latex. Oh, oh to the bottom of the tree, jean it looks like, who's that? Hassan, it looks like he might want to climb up. Or knock it down. <laughs> What are you up to, mister? Checking where mom stashed it. For later snacking. Although Karula is still feeding, he might not go into the tree while she is. Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> look at him, he's trying to... <laughs> Someone spins himself around trying to find the right spot to look at it. And boom, no, he's not going up now. He's going to stare at mom having a feast because she's eating again. Oh, no, giving herself a clean now. You'll probably find if she lies down or comes down from the tree, her sauna will be up in a flash. And we can hear, we can hear that, Jandre. Very clear, the red-chested cuckoo. Oh, oh, get her sauna again. No, he might jump, he's going to jump. No, he's... Now, Anthony was wondering how high can a leopard jump? Anthony, I've seen quarantine probably go oof, a good three or four meters into the air. So I'd probably say that's probably at the, the limit. He was jumping for a flying bird. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Come, Mom, come down. I'm hungry again. Almost can't decide what to do. Oh, looking at his sister. He is an exquisitely beautiful young male leopard. Oh, he's just going to lie down and wait for mom to be finished. Apparently you guys got some incredible screenshots of Karula taking that carcass up the tree. Remember to share them on our Facebook page or on Twitter with the hashtag Safari Live. Oh, here comes Karula. She's coming down. It always amazes me how agile these... Oh, oh as I say that, she misses a step. Now, what's Hassana going to do? I think he's going to go up. Well, first he's got to stretch, you know, clean those claws. Um, let me go forward a little bit for you, Jean-Dre, so that leaf is out of the way for that. Oh, no, sorry. I saw it as he did it. Oh, there we go. Up he goes. <laughs> How did Mom do that? Now what, mister? Oh, you're going to go that way. Mom didn't go that way. Oh, there we go. Well done. He's got there in the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's go back again. Oh, 
we nearly dropped it already. <laughs> Karula's left and gone back to go bury the stomach. And now let's hope Hosanna doesn't drop it. Why are you moving it? It was in a perfectly good spot, young man. really hungry, he's just more wanting to play with the carcass. Oh, the temperature's dropped a bit, so that, sorry, that noise is just my zip going up. Oh! <laughs> he stood on a rotten branch. <laughs> oh, silly you chap. That carcass doesn't look like it's going to stay if you hung it on that tiny little thing, mister. It looks like he's actually managed to drape it over a vine that's growing in the tree. Now William is wondering why the Queen would bury the stomach. See, he's not that hungry, he just felt like playing, I think. Yes. Uh, well, William, it's to try to stop the smell spreading and attracting creatures like hyenas. Here we go. Are you eating now or are you still, pl no, still playing? Look at that. One ear's already been eaten. Oh, careful, don't stand on those dead branches. This is just so special. We're so incredibly privileged to be able to spend the amount of time we do with uh, Karula and her cubs. And it's always that little bit sweeter when you track and find her yourself. Oh, it's so, so wonderful that they've moved that carcass out of that very thick area out and put it in this wonderful Tamburji tree. Mm, little Shongile is lying down uh, opposite us. I'm just going to see if we can get a view of her if I go forward. Go have a quick check. There she is. Um, can you get her there, Jean-Dre? Oh, she's right on the ground here. Yeah. There we go. There she is, just behind that bush there. Fast asleep. I want to go see if Krula is burying that stomach. It could be quite an interesting thing to look at. So let's go back and have a look. So while we get into that position, let's go back and see what Commander Bond is up to. Play with his food. We can only hope the Inkahumas take a turn soon. Fingers crossed and hopefully we'll know when the necropsy's been done on the cub what is wrong with them. 
but on happier notes, look how wonderful and healthy the leopards are looking. Now, Krula went to bury the stomach content. We saw her doing it for a second, but she's gone into a spot where we can't really see her. But a little Shongile is still there. I think we're going to try get down into the drainage where we can maybe see the other leopards a bit better because uh, it's not the best view from up here, although it has been the best spot a little bit earlier. Okay, where was it that we dashed up? There we go. That was quite fun. A little bit of technical driving. I'm going to do some more technical driving now. And of course, avoiding sensitive trees like timbertis and jackalberries, only driving over the fast growing ones. Now, this timberti is going to be a little bit harder to avoid. I'm trying to think how we're going to do this. There we go. You got it, Jandre? There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now it is getting quite dark so we're not going to stay here for too much longer. But fortunately with this camera, Jandre might be able to work some magic. Um, what do you think Jandre, go for Shungile rather? It's going to be quite difficult to get Hasana because of the light. He's in a bit of a funny spot. He's still more playing than eating, but he has put that carcass in a precarious spot that it could fall quite easily. Luckily, no hyenas are waiting at the bottom. Okay, well, let's go look at Shungila. I think she's going to be in a slightly better spot for us in this low light. <laughs> You're going to fall again, you silly. That's a dead branch. <laughs> Standing on a dead branch. Uh, and I know a lot of you... Oh, oh. And Teresa and many, many others are wondering whether the leopards could fall for the same disease. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, is, it is possible, but highly unlikely. And it's going to be interesting to find out what it is. But at the moment, these creatures look in perfect condition. Mm, keep standing on dead branches, mister. And there goes a branch. <laughs> Not the... <laughs> Head butting that irritating branch out of the way. It's quite an aggressive little headbutt there by the prince. Don't drop it now. It's always just wonderful to sit and watch leopards. Oh, that's the dead branch. Don't. <laughs> He's standing on it again. It's almost like he wants to take a tumble. Oof. Living danger dangerously, mister. Now, We've seen them go up the tree, and we saw Karula come down the tree, and Kristen in North Carolina is wondering how they do. Well, they'll actually climb down forwards, and then they'll jump at the last little bit. Um, but they're 
it's possible that they can, would survive a jump from that high, but normally they come down the tree forwards and then just the last sort of meter or two they'll leap. Oh, he's back up to nonsense. Oh, well, speaking about, here we go. Kristen, it looks like he might go down the tree to show you. Now, have a look. Oh, is he going to change his mind? Mm, I think he's coming down. There we go. So see how he comes down facing forwards? <laughs> is he stuck? <laughs> that is, yeah, there we go. <laughs> And here you go. Oh, oh, oh. And there we go. The last little bit. The last meter or so. He'll probably jump. Whoop. Just like that. Well, there you go, Kristen. That answers your question perfectly, how they come down. Right, there we go. Wow. It is getting dark and we are in a very difficult area, so Jandre and I are going to start moving out and while we do that, Commander Bond has some final words for you.